What's going on everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kieran. It's been a long time guys. I have been transforming, possibly. I have been transitioning, probably. And I have been doing my best to give myself what we all like to say is self-love. I've been trying my best guys. And I hope you guys have been too. I haven't made a lot of content because the priorities of my butterfly transformation the caterpillar to the butterfly um though i may have skipped a step uh is ongoing and currently fascinating but in any case guys uh, i am back with some content so here you go and today i wanted to do a video on letting go because that is the theme of a transition it's the theme of one stage of your life to another stage of your life it is the theme of life in general it's the theme of your experience okay if you're here watching this video right now then you need to let go of something or you have let go of something or you will let go of something it doesn't matter who you are the point is that letting go is going to be a central central theme to the process of your spiritual transformation and you can take a look at that as your emotional transformation your physical transformation mental transformations any of those sort of areas of what we would consider an experience on life involves some element of letting go, right? There's an element of, a, of, a, of having a ball in your hand, squeezing it ever so tightly, only to inevitably and sometimes very difficultly uh, letting it go, right? I don't know if difficultly is, is a word, but it probably is, right? Uh, so letting it go after just holding on to something so intense and people struggle with this people struggle with the idea of letting go how do we actually drop that ball and then not pick it back up because sometimes we do seem to let go of something and only to catch it right here right we let go and then catch it and that's a trick that the ego small self will use over and over and over again you know you'll convince yourself that you've let go of something only to pick it up later it's, it's a kind of like a payoff right you you kind of get to you kind of get the satisfaction of letting go of something only for the ego to come back around at some point and actually pick it back up because i think the ego actually knows that you the the individual the self the consciousness is actually trying to change uh, so it has, you have to bargain with yourself in order to like even like remotely get ahead in your own life like if you're trying to give up something you know let's say you're trying to give up uh, smoking or something right uh, could be anything, uh, hopefully not uh, cocaine or crack, or whatever it is. Do you smoke cocaine? I don't think so, but you get my point. And you know, the ego will say, uh, you know, okay, let's let's drop it for now. I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll only smoke every day. I'll smoke two or three times a week. And you know, you get like this, you get to like let go, and then it picks it back up, picks it back up, right? Um, because the ego still wants to hold on to the thing that it, that that it is actually causing you pain or some sort of suffering, right? If it, if it wasn't causing you suffering. You wouldn't want to let go of it, right? And it's usually a really great, uh, great tell if something is working or not working, right? And so the first thing we have to understand with letting go is that it's not and never has been about what's right or wrong, okay? So there is no right or wrong on this planet that is quite simply a judgment. A judgment comes from the mind, okay? It comes from, comes from your ego. Uh, certainly, there's times and places to use the words right or wrong, right? We're not going to be talking about language in this video, but we are going to be talking about the idea of uh, right or wrong and how it plays in your life. Because if something's right, then you get to feel satisfaction and, and sort of a vindication of it. And if something's wrong, then, you know, you get to feel guilty or shameful about it, right? And if somebody else is wrong and you're right, then you get to feel right and they get to feel wrong, right? So there's, it's like a balance of power, right? And it's not about that. It, it is about what works and what doesn't work. And I've been learning that myself, right? It, it has never been about whether or not, uh, you know, like a certain diet was wrong for me. It was if it worked or didn't work. And that was a much easier lens to see things through. Because when you remove the right or wrong, you remove all of the emotions and the feelings behind those things often negative feelings negative emotions you remove them from the whole equation because then you're just looking at things well if it works then i should hold on to it and if it doesn't work then i probably should let go of this thing because it doesn't seem to be working anymore it's not helping me and it'll be easier but if there's a wrongness attached to what doesn't work 
then you have guilt and you have shame and it actually perpetuates a cycle to continue to do that thing often in, in binge-like ways, right? So when it comes to letting go, there is a super important method that you have to remember and it is two-part and the only and most important of these two parts that you really need to understand is that you don't need to let go of hating a particular person. You don't need to let go of uh, you don't need to let go of always being right. You don't need to let go of your addiction if you have one. You don't need to let go of, you know, being angry all the time in the car because somebody cut you off. You don't need to let go of those things. It seems it seems weird, but hear me out. You don't need to let go of those things because it's not actually the problem, okay? You hating somebody, hating your neighbor, for instance, maybe your neighbor um, plays loud music every night or... Um, or they have a beard that just looks so ugly that you just hate them for it. Maybe you just hate them for whatever reason. Uh, you don't. It's not really about whether or not you hate them or not, okay? Because that's not the issue. It's just it, it's not really what's going on. What you need to let go of is not your hate for another particular person. Rather, what you get out of hating somebody, right? So again, you don't need to stop hating a particular person. You need to, you know, you don't need to let go of hating a person. You need to let go of what you get out of hating that person. There's going to be a payoff. Okay, there's going to be a payoff that you get from holding on to something. Okay, and if you let go of those feelings associated with that particular idea, then everything else will follow. Right, so it's, you know, you don't have to stop doing anything. Really, like you don't have to let go of individual things. That seems like a lot of work. It seems like you have to do something. It seems like there's a process you have to go through. And it just seems like a lot of stuff because any given person probably has five or six things they think they have to let go of and maybe a dozen more for the person who overthinks and maybe triple more for the person who goes through a spiritual awakening process. Right? Seems to be always something to let go of, right? Well... The thing is, is that the reason you may be struggling to let go is because you're trying to let go of a symptom when you should be letting go of the disease, okay? There's no point in letting go of your one particular uh, thing, you know? There's, again, no reason to let go of, uh, of, of your diet. There's no reason to let go of eating chocolate every night, okay? You, there is no real reason. That's a symptom, okay? You let go of a symptom, another one pops up, okay? Doesn't matter. What you need to let go of is the disease, and the disease in that particular case may be shame and guilt. Uh, could be a number of things, but you re remove the negative emotions. That's all you have to do. You don't have to look at it from a, from a symptom point of view. You don't have to look at it as a particular road. You don't have to do that, right? We, we, we tend to think that, well, we have all these roads available to us, right? Like we're sitting in the middle and there's like eight different roads and we think like, oh shit, I, I, I need to, which one do I go down? Which, which one do I need to let go of? Which uh, avenue is the best for me? Well, that becomes overwhelming and confusing, and it, and it seems highly improbable that we could ever make that decision or follow through with letting go of one particular thing. Well, if you just let go of the idea of having all of these different roads, if you just let go of the core emotion that's going on in the first place, then you won't have any more of those, those negative emotions. You won't have any more confusion, right? If you're confused about making a choice, for example... Um, it, it's not about like which choice is best, right? If you have four or five different options, um, right? It, it's not about that. It's about the it's about the emotion that you feel behind it. If you can let go of the confusion <clears throat> and what drives your confusion in the first place, then your choices in life won't seem so confusing. They won't seem so hard to determine, right? Uh, if you are stuck between two different people, for example, um, it, it's it's not about which one is. It's not about them in particular. It's about your emotions and how they drive your choices. If you let go of your emo emotions about a choice in particular, you'll find that it was never really about the why. Uh, it was about the what. Let go of the, whatever you're feeling, negative feeling, confusion, anxiety, pain, whatever you have to do if you have to make a choice, right? Uh, if you let go of that, the answer will already be there because you do, in fact, have the answer. What you're letting go of is the block between you and the answer within you that resides within you. And that block, which is the two step of this process, is essentially your thoughts. Okay. Now, your thoughts aren't at all responsible for your negative emotions, but they do trigger them. Okay. So when you 
disidentify with your thoughts, you're essentially releasing control, okay, uh, in a very easy way. People think that they have to have control, that if they stop thinking, they'll die. Uh, but the truth is, you'll be just fine. <laughs> you'll be all right. And your life will continue in an unexpected and beautiful way. I, I've been noticing that a lot of my life. I've had some very beautiful moments happen to me recently, all because I stopped identifying with my thoughts. If a thought comes in, I don't need to listen to it. It could say anything. It could say, let's go run over that little baby. It could say, you know, uh, let's put my uh, my penis in a fan, right? It'd be a fun little idea, right? Uh, but I don't need to listen. It could say things uh, of less comical nature, such as things you can relate to, like, uh, I hate myself, you're not good enough, right? Thoughts, you don't need to listen to them because they're not reflective on anything. What they do is they trigger an emotion that's already within you, right? There's, uh, and, and that's it, really. There's no truth or basis to any of your thoughts. So if you can stop identifying with your thoughts, if you can be mindful of them, if you can even practice not thinking at all and see that you can actually exist without having thoughts, what you'll notice is that there is absolutely a presence inside of you, which is the basis of all true spirituality there is a basis of something, a spiritual divine presence that does take place within you, and it exists within you as a peaceful organism, something beyond your thoughts and your feelings and your body, right? It becomes what I guess you would call an observer. You are an observer. You are not the movie playing out, but yet the screen, the projector in which the movie is being played on, endless and forever if that makes sense. It's a metaphor. Uh, I read that recently. It's not my metaphor, um, but it makes perfect sense. Okay. We get caught up in the movie of our lives and yet it might even be another way of looking at it might even be that you are actually in the theater viewing the movie, but we become engrossed in it just like we do in our real actual lives. If you've ever watched a movie and become completely engrossed in it, crying, getting angry, rooting for characters, you'll understand, you'll, you'll understand completely, right? Nothing wrong with that. Of course, it's just that that is actually how our lives work. Um, we can take a step back. And we have to first do that by ignoring our thoughts or not, I, not attaching onto them. That is to say, you can't stop a thought. It's going to come no matter what you do. But you can absolutely choose not to attach yourself to it. Choose not to engage, right? And if you have the ability to choose to do that, then surely you must recognize with awareness that you are not your thoughts quite deeply you're something else beyond your thoughts right and that's where your higher self comes in where your actual uh, divinity is present within you as that observer essentially becoming aware of awareness right now that's a topic for a different day the idea of this video is to simply suggest to you that if you do these two things you will be able to let go more readily right letting go of your negative emotions is prudent to move forward in life because what you get from holding on to them is what keeps you stuck Okay, and I'm talking about this from personal experience. This is not just informative. This is not just to help you guys out and then go back to my merry old life. No, this is coming from real life. This is me spending most of my life with a negative mindset. And it's not to say that that negative mindset has erased itself, destroyed itself, completed itself. But I have taken the right and correct steps I've taken the steps that, that I know that work in order to get that, right? I've been meditating every day. In fact, at the end of this month, I will do a video on what it's been like to meditate for every day. So far, it's been uh, eight, eight or nine days. I've meditated and journaled every day for eight or nine days. My plan is to do that for 30 and then see what the result is. And I'm noticing a lot more mindfulness, a lot more pauses throughout my day, a lot more moments of peace and solitude. Um, not loneliness, but moments of, by solitude, I mean, moments in which I can connect to myself in a deeper way, which have been helping. So when you let go of those thoughts, you let go of the need to identify with those emotions, right? And the number one reason we don't want to face those emotions is because, of course, they're negative. They, they hurt us. They're, there's something uncomfortable about them, right? And yet, if you've ever been at the DMV, you will realize that life is uncomfortable sometimes. There are things you do that don't sit well with you, and yet you can make it through to the other side. For instance, you go to the DMV and you come out with a license. Congratulations, you can now drive your Buick down I-5. That's awesome. 
and congrats to you. But you've got your license, you've got a sense of freedom, you have maneuverability, you can do something extra, right? We all remember that feeling when we were younger, 16, 17, for some of us even later, uh, getting that license and, and feeling that freedom to, to travel, to go eat McDonald's at 2 a.m. in the morning and not have to answer to anybody in particular. Wonderful feelings. Uh, and yet, we can do the same thing with our emotions, okay? And this is absolutely true. I can't stress this enough. If you feel a negative emotion come up, if you really want to let go and move ahead in your life, and you do those these steps that we're talking about in tandem, right? These are things that you're doing constantly, basically. If you sit with an uncomfortable emotion, I promise you that after 15 to 25 minutes, it will disappear. It will go away on its own, and you will, and the feeling will be replaced by joy and peace. I've done this every time, this week especially, every time that I've felt a negative emotion, I've done this. And I've just waited for it to go away. I just sit with it. I don't identify with my thoughts. I just focus in on the feeling because I'm detached. And when you're detached from your thoughts, it's not that scary. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter because it, because it's your thoughts that are triggering that emotion, right? When you get in your head about your emotions, it's your thoughts that are making it seem so scary, right? I mean, you have a, a feeling, for instance, a pain in your heart, usually, and your thoughts will tell you, you know, like, uh, just tell you things like, are you useless? You suck. Like, this feeling's never going to go away. I hate myself. This is shitty. I wish it was over. And all these thoughts just go from one to the other, to the other, to the other, and you'll never <laughs> find peace in that. And then you'll run away. You'll, you'll suppress it. You'll go do something. You'll distract yourself. You will go stick your penis in a fan or prefer or preferably another human being but um, that might not even be a good idea either right uh, and you might go do drugs and you might have sex with somebody you might go watch a bunch of tv shows you might eat right there's a numerous amount of things that you might do with your time instead of facing that emotion for only measly 15 20 minutes an episode of everybody loves raymond is all you got to do to to get rid of that emotion and it doesn't mean that it'll go away forever it might come up next week. It might come up the two hours from from then. It might come up uh, a day, you know, a day later. It really depends on what that particular emotion is, and how much you've suppressed it, right? But it will go away eventually. It will go away. It'll get easier. It'll get lighter. And once you've done it once or twice, once you've sat with an emotion once or twice and seen it go away on its own accord, you will find a certain type of strength within you, and you will stop you will stop identifying with your thoughts in, in a very clear and concise manner. That has been one absolute particular transformation that I have gone through in a short amount of time from the time that I kind of stopped making YouTube videos for a bit uh, that I have noticed in my life and it happened almost overnight was as soon as I could sit with my emotions instead of suppressing them and running away from them, I realized that it, it didn't matter how painful it get or what I was afraid of or what my thoughts said. I just knew now, fully knew it, not just intellectually, but now spiritually, emotionally, I fully know it, that it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what is going on in my head. It, it just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not as important as the observant. So I have the power to face my pain. That's what I realized. And that's an important step. Once you realize you have the power to face your pain and then you overcome it, well, then there isn't anything you can't do in this life because the only thing that is in your way at all times is you. Nothing else, just you. So I hope this video helped. It was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, I know that our intention spans, including my own, run a little bit thin these days, but I do hope this video reached you in a positive light, positive manner. But for now, guys, we will talk sometime soon. I'm going to be doing some more videos in the future since I feel a little bit better and I'm going to be getting back into tarot readings as well but more to that later on hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday we'll talk soon see you guys